You're listening to iCannabisRadio.com. Good tornado warning, Colorado. Also, I guess the rest of the country. I suppose we're not just a centrally located radio station, are we? No. Hi. This this is Samantha. I'm here at THC Magazine, uh, iCannabisRadio.com. And I'm here with the Bong Fong folks today. Bong a thon. Bong a thon. Bong a thon. That's right. A little bit Woo! of a, a little bit of a uh, old school tradition there. Uh, um, you know, every time somebody says Bong a thon. Yeah, you kind of have to like repeat it back. I know. I've got the like janky ass mic, Christian. I What's do. I got the that? one that's like gonna. Did you pull it I did not pull it forward. Do you, you want to swap? I'm all about swap. No, no, no. I, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Christian's like she gets no special treatment. Radio wench. <laughs> yeah, radio wench. I'll just call myself that for now on. So I am here with a uh, Jetter. And Hello. Norm. Say hi, Norm. Hello, Samantha. No- How are you? Norm just got done <laughs> ripping a fat bong, a bong so he's hit. little. <laughs> yeah, I was just, you know, regaining control there. Regaining control. Oh, regaining yeah. control. Uh, so we got and uh, Andy, who I met for the first time today. How you doing? And uh, we are we are Davidless. Davidless today. Um, but that's good. Yeah, hey, Andrew. You got to get up on the mic just like when you were in prison. Don't pull the mic <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got you. Don't be afraid to talk. All right. Y'all don't want me to talk the whole time. So um, we were just actually, I uh, apologize for the delayed start, stuck in tornado traffic today. A little bit of a hailstorm. You think that's going to happen at Marathon? No. Oh, well, we've, we've had hailstorms up there before. I remember back in the 90s we had one where I had a friend, Gooch, that was, uh, he was underneath a single tarp that had a line of wire in the center with the four ends pulled down, and there was like... Four and a half inches of hail <laughs> while he was stuck underneath. You're it. talking about a dude that lost his car one night while he was drunk, and it had like a pound of weed in the back of it. And dude never found I the say car. He never found it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He never Honest, found his car. True no, story. Never, ever true story. Don't forget your radio at the Bongathon, though. Don't, Don't they make an app for that now? Probably. Yeah. But they this do. this was in the 90s. Oh. There were no apps. I know. We're, <laughs> we're a spoiled generation now. A spoiled generation. That's okay, though. I, well, I kind of like it. Um, actually, the last time I took a road trip, I refused to use GPS. I said, we will use maps. So I scoured everywhere to find an atlas, and they are impossible to find. Let me tell you Truck what. Stops, <laughs> I know. You used to be able to like, walk in a gas station and just find a map, but these days, no yeah. way. No way. It's crazy. The, the map guys have all converted to online. Dude, Andrew's scared of that microphone over there <laughs> no, or something. I used to run a recording studio for the last five years. <laughs> I can hear him. I can hear him. Can you hear okay. He's good. I'm comfortable with microphones, believe me. All right. You just look nervous over there. <laughs> it's not my show. It's your show, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, her, it's, it's her it's show. It's my show. It's, it's her show. show. My show. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, all right. So, for those of you who are not in the uh, know, Bongathon <laughs> is the most amazing tradition that's been going on for how long, guys? Well, it started in 1974. 1974. Yes. I was not even a twinkle in my dad's eye in 1974. <laughs> I was two years old. I graduated high school in 1983. I was born ten years later, <laughs> in '84. So yeah, it was a bunch of it was a bunch of college students up there. They uh, they had a little party uh, initially up there uh, in the dorm or at up in Boulder itself, and then the second year I know they actually went to. Uh, Steve Shore and Doug Shore's father's cabin, and that's kind of like how the camping tradition kind of evolved for Bongathong. Um, those guys went up there, and I think they had I don't know an ounce of weed each or something, and they smoked it over the span of the weekend. And whoever finished it first won the Bongathong, quote unquote. I think it was it, it's all been derived from the Toyota Athon commercials from back in the day. Oh, yeah? That's I where I think that. the bong a uh, originated. Somebody saw the toyota a commercial and was like, <laughs> oh, that was just like a regular bong a <laughs> Oh, my gosh. And now, and now how many events do we have? Well, it's it's kind of weird. It's, it's in its 31st event, but there's actually been 32 parties, and it gets complicated. The first 25 years, it went in, in, uninterrupted up through 99. And then Larimer County raided the party in '99. They brought in like 300 Dude, cops. It was, yeah, it was a, it was a huge bust. Yeah, they Rick Russell. Rick Russell, <laughs> that's our buddy. 
Yeah. We should name a strain after Rick Russell. Should be like that sweet tooth strain that nobody likes. <laughs> Dick Russell. All CBD yeah. or something. I don't know. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. It'd be, no it'd psychoactive. Be, I, I, it'd be ruderalis or some shit. I like the CBD strain. You yeah, know, I, I like yeah. to. I love the CBD pens. I like to think of them as liquid Xanax. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying. I know. We well, need to embroider his name in legend because you know Rick Russell really. He rounded up like it was like twenty different agencies worth of people to come up there. They came up like three hundred deep, in full right gear, uh, with you know tear gas and the whole nine yards. Like they they were going to get into a war out there. Sniper rifles for a bunch of potheads. They, they had M forty machine guns that on was crazy. jeeps. They had equestrians. They had you know uh, tear gas and right gear, and it was equestrian. Like, so. Like horses. Horse cops? Yeah, exactly. Did the horses have guns? The horses did have guns, but the <laughs> cops were using them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so weird. It was crazy. And, you know, they came in, they searched every other car on the way out. And then basically they, they did an investigation later and they kicked in like another 10 or 11 doors after the event itself. Um, and that was in 1999. So when that happened, the party took a hiatus, you know. And it didn't go on, at least to our knowledge through 2010 and i opened a dispensary in 09 and one of the first things i wanted to do was put on put the party back on so we reorganized the event <coughs> and we got in touch with all the old guys basically anybody that had anything to do with bongathong back in the day that we knew and we could get a hold of uh we did and we invited them all to the party and you know we we comped them all and you know we basically threw the 25th again because the 25th hadn't been done the year it got busted. They mm -hmm. came in at like 8 o'clock in the morning, and so the actual bong thong hadn't been done. I'd carried the trophy around for over a decade, like waiting for this day that we could give it away again at the, at the bong thong And so we reorganized the event. We, we did give it away that year. That was in 2010. 10. Yeah, and then uh, we've done 11, 12, 13, and obviously this will be 14. 14. And when what, when is it? For all our people who are not in the know. It's August 1 and 2. August 1 and 2. So the first, very first weekend of August. He, he tries to sell it short. I always just say it's a three-day camping event and say August 1st, 2nd, 3rd. But it's actually the first weekend of, of August every year. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. And, and we've got, you know, some people come up and party Thursday. You know, we have our staff up there and stuff setting everything up on Thursday. And then Friday is the big party night. We'll have bands up there Friday night. Uh, big Rager up there Friday. We'll have an ice sculpture that you can smoke out of, uh, do bong hits and oil rigs out of. Uh, we'll have a VIP bus up there that you can do free uh, bong hits and oil rigs on the Hopefully on the it's VIP still passes. safe. I'm sure it is. <laughs> it's got nice new hardwood floors in it and oh, everything. Nice. It's, a, it's a converted uh, Bluebird what? bus that's made for dabbing. Oh. Yeah. You were in there last year, right? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Uh, She's like, yeah. You just sure. don't remember. No, I remember. I remember. It, it was fuzzy. <laughs> I actually remember. I really liked it. It was my first bongathon, and um, it did get rained a little bit. We were rained out, which yeah, was kind of cool. Weather. Yeah, a little weather. Um, if you don't, it's not bongathon. Well, one of my favorite I've... memories, actually, I think, was interviewing... Um, Shit, I'm forgetting his name. He was one of the winners. Um, the older Mark Rice? Yes. Yes. Interviewing Mark Rice. And all of a sudden it's are raining, you know, we're in their tented area, their little camping area. They were in the inner circle, you know. Sure. And uh all of a sudden there goes Jenny Cush just dashing across like the center of the thing, <laughs> getting drenched. You yeah. should probably do something for her. Yeah, there I think Jer I think Reverend Jeremy's gonna come up and he's gonna have some of the lasers and stuff that they, they use for apogee. Oh, that'd be um, awesome! Yeah, so we're gonna do those guys. Of... Those guys are fixing to sign a lease up there at the property with Sean to have Apogee yeah, up there Apogee every up year. There right really? Up, yeah. Yep. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yep. That would be awesome. That would be a lot of fun. Good. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great event. Uh, you know, there are it's you don't have to compete to come to the Bongathong. There's always that misconception. Uh, this is a bash, and we call it a tradecation because typically it's the industry insiders that come up to the party. Uh, the hash growers are grass growers, hash blowers, dispensary owners, head shop owners, you know, media people, you know, within the industry. It's all tight knit. And, you know, we'll have about 2,000 people up there total. So it's big enough rager to have like the best time of your life, but it's small enough that it's really cool. You can spill into anybody's yeah, campsite. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I mean, it was a good amount of people, enough to meet new people, but enough that you knew like 
every other campsite. You, you over. can see all your friends while you're there. It's yeah. like, you know, you got a cannabis cup high times out there and like, you know, you've got like a laundry list of people you want to talk to and see out oh, there. And by the time you get through there, you didn't see any of them, no. you know, or maybe and, like three or four of them. High times cup. Like, I'm just going to like, not to shit talk, but I'm going to do a little shit talking right now. Like, ugh, it's just, ugh. you know why it's, ugh. Because it's just a big cattle on, and right, like they don't sponsor us or anything like that, so fuck them. Well, it's but just like, a, it's a huge, <laughs> club. It's a huge cl- I mean, there's so many people there, 37,000 people there. I know, I know, I know. And that's part of the problem, though. I mean, I, I, what am I, I'm going to go see, like, I don't get to see any of my friends. I'm going to hang out. Like, yeah. it's just a big cat. It literally is like cattle that people, like, walk in these, like, really slow lines past each booth. And, and don't get me wrong, like, if you, you know, I actually happen to be sitting in the Incredibles tent most of the time. Oh, it's just the, awesome. The problem I see with most of them is they're sponsor driven. Yeah, they're sponsor driven, and this is like this is just people having a good time, which I love. Yeah, yeah oh, that's totally all sponsor driven. Totally. And it's just about having a good time. Like if you if you come to the Bongathon and you don't have the time of your life, uh, I didn't do my job right, and then you need to let me know. Yeah, so that's I, I, not the way it works. I prefer events like you listen to some good music. That's another problem. There's really no real music at you know it's like DJed kind of just fine, but. Um, you know, like, oh, I want to listen to some, like, bands play. I want to remember we already talked about how I was going to get up and do my stand-up routine. Right. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Um, we, you know, we're really excited about this. So. Well, we've got <clears throat> we've got some good acts this year. We've got P-Knuckle coming up and play. P-Knuckle? Mm-hmm. Like the game P-Knuckle or, like, no, the band? No, the band. Oh. And then we're going to have Los Marijuanos up there, and they're going to play. Um, we've got Dorian Vibe coming up. They're a really good reggae band. And then we've got this band coming out of uh, Nebraska called uh, Root Punch. And they're, they're pretty hot, too. So we're going to have all those guys. we got Chuck Roy doing a comedy set. We're going to have the 420 comic up there doing his comedy set. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're fishing around right now for a headliner. So. Oh, nice. So there are bands that play all day, or is it, like, from, like, 7 well, to, like, midnight? Kind on of Friday night, it's a Friday night bash. So we start the bands about 7 o'clock, and they'll go through midnight. And then we'll run iPod music, you know, to, like, 420 a.m. Um, Saturday, however, is different. You know, everybody gets up in the morning. The, the, the sun usually fries you out of your tent by like eight o'clock. And so we do individual competitions starting at high noon. And that's the most prestigious competition. I feel like we need sound effects for that. Like yeah. the little. That's right. The little cowboy yeah, sound effects. And if effect. you're going to the Bongathon and renting an RV, psh, good luck getting one this late in the season. Yeah, oh, it's kind of yeah. hard to get RV, but we do have a company called OutdoorsGeeks.com. Outdoors Geeks. I know we were talking about yeah, and what, them. Yeah, and what they'll do is they're bringing up a whole truckload full of camping equipment, so you can literally reserve your camping equipment with them. Uh, it's like it like starts at like two hundred bucks. It starts with two people, and they'll bring up your tent, your bag, your table. They'll set everything up for you. Like all you're gonna have to do is crawl into it Friday night when you get there. And then they'll tear it all down on Sunday. Yeah. I, I rely on David to do all that stuff. He's like the details guy. <laughs> I just show up and be awesome. That's perfect. <laughs> you know, it's kind of. <laughs> David says he wasn't coming this year, right? What? Uh, he's still going to, like, arrange everything, though, no, right, I Christian? Think it, Wait, I think what? he's coming. He's coming. He's got to come. He's yeah, going to say that was my impression that he was coming. Listen, listen, listen. Usually about that time, you're like about six, seven, eight weeks after the baby's born, you're like, I need a break. Oh, yeah, that's right. They I got need a new a break. That, That's why I said that I think that he said he didn't know if he was going to make it or not this year. Yeah, I think he, that's what he was saying, but I think he's going to get that little twitch in his eye <laughs> and he's going to be like, I've got to get like, I need a break. You know, not that babies aren't, but they're wonderful. We love them, and they're so gooey and fun. But like, when, when you can give them back, yeah. No, no, no. I like my kid. He's <laughs> he's nine now. So mine's twenty one. Well, I love the hell out of mine. Yeah, it's a little too late to give them back at that point. You're like past your, you're past your like extended Expiration warranty. Date. They're yeah. to give you back at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Bongathong, the individual comp goes down at high noon. Last year, Mark Rice, the winner. He smoked his quarter ounce of pot, seven grams, in five minutes and 26 seconds. Um, and that's really hard to do. That's awesome. But still my favorite event from last year was the five-man hookah. <coughs> that is always a, a, a show stopper, if you will. Uh, we always get a good rise out of that, people. When you got 12 hookahs with five people smoking on each hookah, and each one has to smoke an ounce, and, and you, you basically consider that... You know, you've got 60 people in a tent all smoking weed as fast as they can. It's it's pretty impressive. It's pretty fun It gets to watch. pretty smoky in those tents, too. It does, too. too. York, one of the cameramen the year before last, was like, dude, I physically had to leave the tent because I was, <laughs> was getting just too smoked out of it. 
Well, and then, um, so the story of the five men who get over, those who aren't in the know. So, I mean, I had been, my, this is my first event. Um, my really good friend Adam, who also has a radio show here, Adam Dunn, came up. It was his first time, I think, making it to the bong thong. He'd spent most of his life over in uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yeah. Creating havoc over there. And then, uh, and so, like, there was a team missing, right? So, someone, there was an extra team. Yeah, we, or we put the call out. And what happens is uh, one of our five man team members, like, didn't show up. They couldn't hear the call. They weren't aware that we were. They were dabbed the fuck out. Let's yeah, be honest. probably. And that's what I think they were DTFO <laughs> up on the hill. And, and they'd already paid for yeah, their hookah, exactly. et cetera. And of course, the ounce is there, and the competition's getting ready to go down. So, basically, I just put a call in for uh, to, to assemble a star studded. Uh, team there if you will and then pony boy from los marijuanas jumped in and adam jumped in and a couple of our close friends jumped in and filled up the hookah and yeah they actually won the competition <laughs> and they didn't they break a right re- and they broke the record they yeah, killed they, it they did break the record they were like right at like 12 minutes they annihilated yeah, <laughs> for they, an ounce of weed <laughs> was it say they annihilated it it was it was a lot it was a lot of fun and um so excited so how many events how many competitions well are we there? we have there's five pot smoking events, and then there's the dab out competition. And so then there's a couple the dab of out other kinds of contests. Now, is dab out new, relatively No, new? we did it last year. Did it was it the first year. year we did it. And basically, what we do is tenth of a gram dabs. They have a minute to do each dab, and they can do it for as long as they can do it. Uh, George C4 Snoop on the Facebook last year, he did it in 20, 27 dabs. So he smoked 2.7 grams in 27 minutes. And he didn't die. <laughs> no, he didn't <laughs> die at just all. Said, now, now, I just let someone to know he did not die. Now, here's right. the deal. Everybody's like, oh, I could do that, blah, blah, blah. Well, the thing is, is you do a dab, and you can't do the second dab until the clock hits that first minute. Then you can go to the second dab and so on. So you've, you're only allowed to do one dab per minute, but you have to heat your own nail up and all that stuff. So you start to run out of time yeah, eventually. Let it cool down. Get the dab in it. Control your cough. Deal with the buzz, get the next one ready to go, fire it up again. Like, That's... I can only do two, Chris? Oh, well, even when we were testing it out, because we, te- you know, we try to test them out a little bit just to see if we're on the right track. And last year... You know, we're like, all right, let's do tenth of a, and uh, man, tenth of a, that's not very much. Let's, you know, let's try it. And Norm laid out like five in front of me, and I got through two, and I was like, oh yeah, dude, that's fine. Like, we were that, no that's that's craziness. That's craziness. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So, so you've got how many? Okay, so how many weed smoking competitions? We've got individual bong and thong. That's a quarter bong. ounce, uh-huh. and that's where all the hardware is. That's we the the bongs that you win on that are worth about five G's. Um, those five five thousand dollars. Yeah, they're about a twenty five hundred dollar wholesale piece. Just, just like this one right here. Well, that's so that's one of the, the trophies from. That's the trophy. Yeah, that this is a second place trophy. That's a second place done? trophy, second. and that's a that's a uh, a collaboration with Alex Ubatuba, <laughs> Adam Graffis, uh, Brian Sirk, and Worm. Uh, all the components are made by those guys and then assembled together. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a glass blower myself. I've been involved with the glass community for a long time. So we make sure that the the trophies are of high end <laughs> glass value. And so when they are when they're rolling out at about 2,500 wholesale, you know, if you were to buy in a head shop, they would be valued at about 5,000 each. Um, but you know, it's one of those things. It's a it's a piece that's adorned with all the bongathong images. Oh, like, it's beautiful. I yeah. love the uh, the glass on the the side, the little knob. I love the knobs. And, you, and you would so never be able to buy it. And the, that's the, the bottom thing, of so. its work, too. Yeah, it's a one-of-a-kind. Yeah, yeah, they're one-of-a-kind, kind. so they're worth probably more than that. But yeah. realistically, that's the kind of Well, value. also the glory that comes you, with The it. glory is huge. You know, <laughs> it's huge. And so that's, that's the biggest kind of competition. And then, you know, the additional competitions are Relay, which is a uh, seven-man team. Each man gets a gram, and the bong is the baton. So the first team to smoke all seven grams wins that competition. Um, we've got the uh, team bongathong, which we talked about. That's five man hookahs. They have to smoke an ounce. And the only rule in team bongathong is there are no rules. 
<laughs> so as we as I saw last year, I was yeah, like, and what, gross and what, things going you on. You can bring whatever you want to the <laughs> tent, and once I get them in the tent, I let them know that there are no rules, but they can't leave the tent and go get and right. go get whatever. So if they didn't bring it, they're done. You know what I mean? And so that's the deal on that. Um, we do fastest gram all weekend in the bus, which is you would basically just come in, bring your gram. It's it's a five dollar entry fee, and you crush down a gram as fast as you can. And so my suggestion to you is bring your light, wispy uh, sativa that burns really easy and fast. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think you'll ever get to the point where, like, Olympic style, like, almost like wrestling, like, you even have, like, weight classes, like, for our heavy class champions, like, for, like, the people like your, ge- your gentlemen like yourselves, right? I, you I, know? I get asked about women's divisions and all kinds of Not stuff. Not women's divisions. I was thinking, like, welterweight. No, like I, I understand yeah, what yeah. you're saying, and I, and I get a lot of that. This is the thing, you know. Mark's not a big dude. Yeah, Mark Mark Rice is fifty two years old and he he rides his bicycle every day and he weighs maybe a buck ten all wet. You know what I mean? So Well I wasn't even thinking like weight class. I was no, using I, that as a metaphor. I, I, but I understand. Experience like some class. Tolerance tolerance class. Experience. Yeah. experience class. Experience class. Experience Age tolerance, classes. something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like they a pro versus amateur. But this is the thing. Like when you go to you know, when you go to the hot dog eating contest on Long Island, <laughs> you know, like there's no there's no Slots for different. You see what I'm saying? I love that your first analogy is a food one. You fucking stoner. Yeah, you know. And so that's the thing. Like you know, this is the hot dog eating contest of cannabis. It's it's been right, right. since that's 1974. Fair. That's fair. And so we, you know, we we like to leave it up to any competitors. You know, it's funny. We've been doing the fastest gram contest, uh, and like the last three that we've had up in Colorado Springs have all been dominated by women. And like so it, it's getting it. very competitive. I mean, even like we have a very good lung capacity. Well, this thing used to be tongue in cheek. You know, we, yeah. we when the club start popped up, you know, we we're like, ah, let's go do a fastest gram at a club. You know, and we'd go do there. We'd have a bunch of people realize that it takes a lot to smoke a gram of weed. And a- they after in. they've talked a lot of shit. Yeah, you know. But now that we're kind of in our second and a half year of doing like these club events, like when we posted on the Facebook. I mean, I'll, I showed up in Colorado Springs last week up at the Speakeasy, and there was like 35 people waiting there when I got there, and they all had these serious face on, and like I explained it to them, and they're all just looking at me with stone faces, and I had to tell them, "Whoa, you guys got to lighten up what here." Is a you know? serious, is what is a serious stone face? Well, look they're like? all baked. It's Chinese and red, <laughs> but they're straight, and they're looking at you like they got something to get. <laughs> like they're trying to do complicated long division in their head. They're just like, mm. <laughs> So, you know, and the thing is, is we show up with our cannabis, you know, so we'll, we, you don't have to bring your gram or anything when we do the fastest gram competitions. We'll smoke you up. And uh, so, you know, we'll typically go through anywhere from one to two ounces on any given night, you know, giving out free weed, smoking fastest grams. And, 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 and the ones that talk the shit the most are always the ones that either tap out or Snot take the bubbles. longest. <laughs> Snot <laughs> bubbles blowing out and stuff. Now, that's <laughs> so funny. Like, when I was in college, you know, I used to be, um, actually, this. I could drink a pint of beer faster than anyone. Like, two seconds, I could just crush a right pint of beer. Right down the hatch. Right, boonk. boonk, yeah. And I used to, like, go up against guys the size of Norm, you know, and just crush kill them, them right? <laughs> I don't know if I could do that now, or nor would I say, like, oops, almost spilled my coffee. Oopsies. Well, I, I think the last time, last year when we were here, when you tried to smoke the fastest oh, I, gram, I think you said that same thing. Yeah. I was, you were like... I used to crush dudes just like you drinking beer. I was like, like, okay. okay." (laughs) I don't know. But but, but the point being that, like, I don't do that anymore. I mean, I could if I wanted to. (laughs) But I don't because it's a little irresponsible, you know, that's college. Do you think, and it was like, bring a serious tone, do you think that there's, uh, this promotes irresponsible ca- cannabis consumption, or do well, you think this is just a weekend festival? This, that's for fun? the way we see it. Look, man, if we were doing it downtown on a Friday night and crushing out grams and sending people back out the front door to drive uh, back out on the yeah, streets yeah. or something, that might be one thing. But this is a camping event. Uh, everybody that shows up there just parties like rock stars all Friday night, all Saturday. Nobody's going anywhere. I mean, they're just staying there to to party. Yeah. And then on Sunday, it's you know basically you're hungover. 
pack everything up and you know try to get back down the hill so you can recover for Monday. And again, no one's ever, <laughs> no one's ever like overdosed from too like the fastest gram, right? Because it's just impossible. No, I mean not physically like overdose. Like oh well, my no. god, we've I've... seen some people double over and be out in <laughs> front of the venue puking their their face off, but no, no overdose. Uh, you know what I mean? No yeah. one died. No, no one. No died. one went into no, a coma. Yeah, no, nothing like L- that. Might have got into a weed coma for a while, even like a goldfish yeah, coma. Yeah, I mean. Wow. Typically, if the bargain thong to call that a nap, like a great white yeah. shark. I mean, if, 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 <laughs> if you if you have somebody at the bargain thong that's usually overdone it, it's either a they went to the BHO tent and they're not used to doing dabs, and you know they're letting their hair down. They're Thank not you, going River anywhere. Rock, the first year, so they do a big <laughs> rip, and man, they, you know it just tears them down. Or you know they got too drunk. You know they're drinking off the keg beer and just got too wasted. And it so. is hot out there, so I recommend anybody who comes bring lots of water. Well, and it oh, works yeah. both ways. It's hot during the day, and then at night it cools off. And so we can get any kind of weather up there. It just depends on you know. You know how the patterns are mm-hmm. at the first of August. We like that weekend because it's typically right at the end of summer, so it's not super hot, and then the nights aren't cold yet. I didn't think it was that hot. I mean, I thought it was warm, but like, I'm from Grand Junction, so it's sure. hella it's hot, really hot over, over there. there yeah. yeah, it's like triple digits in the summer, Shh. and they do the same thing. You know, Grand Junction does this uh, four day festival called Country Jam, yep. but it's just a big giant drunk fest. I mean. In ridiculously drunk arrest, cops, it's like you know, crazy, yeah, and that's yeah, okay. Heard stories. Yeah, oh, it's sure. did you know nine months after Country Jam, the birth rate in Grand Junction skyrockets? Uh, <laughs> it's true, that's a true fact. They like it's like there's like little peak, you know, a lot that's of funny. <laughs> hooking up going on, you know? yeah, huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. We call know? that redneck courtship. And, off and, of and we're not against alcohol or anything. We always try to get you know a beer company or something to sponsor every year. Yeah, every year we fail because we're weed. And they don't like us. <laughs> we have they one like this weed. year. We have a beer sponsor this year. Yeah, it's thanks, actually, Lazy Lion. It's a you weed. Do? Yeah, we, uh, Lazy awesome. yes. Lazy Lion up in Colorado Springs is going to buy us twenty five kegs of beer. That's ridiculous. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, thanks, Lazy Lion. Yeah, exactly. Compl- Compl- and they're getting it from Wholesale Liquor Mart that's over on Hampton. Yeah, and they hook us Denver. up too. They always give us a good deal. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's the thing, you know, it, it's a weed company, but they, they're sponsoring our beer, and we love that. You know, we'd like it to get an alcohol company that brews beer to actually kick down and want to co-mingle with us, quote unquote, stoners. But apparently, we're we're not good enough yet. <laughs> You'll be there someday. I'm sure worry. we will. I think Chris just tried to dra- jam a whole gram of weed in this bowl. Is that what he did? Is that what you did, Fastest Chris? gram? Yeah. Is that what we're doing? It's irresponsible of you. Irresponsible. We can do a fastest hey, gram on the air. Speaking of irresponsible, me and Chris were just talking about the other day how we were the dudes that just never wanted to ever fucking grow up, ever. Because, you know, look at us. We're still throwing this raging party. And Hell Yeah. Whatever growing up over is overrated. Are you kidding? That's what too I'm much saying. paperwork. That's the problem I have with it. There's too much responsibility. <laughs> and you know, I saw this. Um, uh, it was like I read like those uh, cracked crack.com. Do you guys ever read that? Like, uh-huh. I, I love cracked. It's hilarious. It does like a lot of listicles kind of things. It's very funny. But they did these like really profound quotes by people you would never expect. Like seventy percent of these profound, like life insightful quotes were all about living in the moment and not like planning too far ahead or regretting the past. It's every single right. one is about living life in the moment and and how like no one ever goes to their deathbed going, I wish I'd smoked less weed. Yeah, no, that's um, true. And if they did, like that sucks. Right. <laughs> oops. Yep, oops. Sucks for them. Yeah. Yeah, no, if you like if you like just having a good time camping, uh, smoking weed, if you like drinking some beer. Good music. Hanging out with friends. Yeah, watching some bands, a little bit of comedy. This is the one, you know. And it, it, it's it's a prestigious event. I mean, it's been going on since 74. It's been underground forever. We've only made it public for like the last two years. You know, even when we were doing the medical events, they were still pretty low-key, you know. and, and Yeah, so, the first two were super low-key. Yeah. And yeah. so, because, you know, the thing is, is like the, you know, having the event being uh, basically yanked the rug out from underneath it for 10 years, you know, like there was 10 years worth of kids coming up that had never heard of it other than maybe some kind of lore from their great yeah. uncle. And this is a <laughs> private event and, you know, it's on private property, Yeah, it's on right? private property. It's yeah. in South Park. It's a private event. You have to have an invitation and then you have to register your invitation on the website. 
So we have a you know we have a complete guest list. We know who's going to be there. Yeah, you guys have been private before <laughs> private was even well, mandated. And, and the one <laughs> and the one thing that's kind of strikes me, and, and it's kind of like everybody's in the learning curve that the Bongathong did years ago, is you know the Bongathong was always permitted and on private land years ago because that was the way you kept the sheriff out. You know, if the sheriff came, he didn't have a search warrant. He couldn't get onto the property. And as long as it was permitted up, they couldn't come in. So we always had a cop, you know, at the front gate somewhere at some point during Bongathong, even in the height of Prohibition. Even okay? in 2010. Yeah, and they and they knew it was Bongathong. I'm sure they did because, you know, I mean, it's obvious. And so, you know, from that perspective, it's always been a private event with invitations. And that was always the taboo. Like, you didn't. You couldn't buy a ticket at the gate. The bikers would kick your ass and tell you to go. Oh, away. yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's the deal now, you know, and especially with the conversation opening up between a private event and a, you know, a public event. I mean, it's like the Cannabis Symphony event, okay? Uh huh. Public event, right? And then they said, oh, no, you know, Hancock had his little hissy. Yeah, they sent their goons out. <laughs> they got their letters. And then, you know, I, I really applaud them for standing up and pushing back and saying, okay, then this is now going to be a private event. Yeah, Jane West, okay. it's uh, done by Jane West and Edible it, Events. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, now, great, now, great idea. now, the question is, is what's the difference between a public event and a private event? I mean, when you've got high times down in Adams County, Okay, which is a very strict county in the state, okay, in quote unquote Denver, in an open parking lot and merchandise mart with 37,000 people consuming openly, okay, and yet less than 10 miles away down in Civic Center Park, right you've, got, you've got the cops out there handing out tickets and, and, and citing people for the same consumption, okay? <coughs> like, what gives? That's the same exact day. Two different venues, both very public. I Two know, different counties. I know. It's, it's, it is rather <coughs> interesting. It's and very eyebrow raising, I'll tell you that. And, and so the question now will become what is a public event and what is a private event? Okay. Well, you know, it's like Bongathong. Is, is, is it a public event? No, it's a private event. But can you, as somebody who's never been to Bongathong, get an invitation for the event? Yeah, sure. just go to one of our sponsors. They've got invitations. Yeah. Buy one from them. Give them the $80 donation. Or call me and be nice, and I'll tell you where to go to get one. And so it's not like... Make friends. That's yeah, right. make friends. It's not like it's it's an event that you can't get into. You know, everybody out there hears about <laughs> invitational, invitational, invitational. The first thought is, oh, I can't get in. I need an invite. No, you just need to go score one. It's not hard to do. Just go find one of these companies that have invites on the shelf. Yeah. So. Well, that's what, I mean, that's what he should be. I, I, I personally think Denver was wrong to come down on the, the symphony orchestra. Because first of all, it's the symphony that's sort of like kicking a puppy. You well, know? and you it's know like, why that is. And that's oh, yeah, and that's Hancock. You know what I mean? And, he, you know, he had. Oh, a, he hates him some weed. He, well, he had a sibling <laughs> that passed away from a drug overdose. And yeah. that's why he is so opposed, because he's convinced that marijuana is the gateway drug. OK. And that was one of the things that yeah. like was talked about over and over and over again during his campaigning days when he was campaigning against Linkhart here. And he ended up you know, winning the primary against Linkhart. And so, you know, that perspective in and of itself, will, will those guys just keep trying to clamp down on everything. And I don't think they have a leg to stand on legally. OK. But what they do is they threaten liquor licenses, okay? And when you have a venue and yep. you have a liquor license in it, that is your bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And if the state were to take that away from you or the city were to take that away from you, you would basically be putting yourself out of business. So whether it's legal, constitutional or not, until somebody's willing to take that challenge and go to court and say, no, you, you, haven't, you haven't regulated it like alcohol and we can have these events here, this is why, because... You know, they're going to keep threatening, and anybody that will yield to that threat, they'll, they'll keep sending out letters. Yeah, uh, and, and, you know, the funny thing is is that the space gallery was is completely private. The guy owns the lot of land that it's it's being held at. Um, and Where is that exactly? It's on 6th and Santa Fe. Okay, I know that. Or not 6th and Santa Fe, sorry, 4th and Santa Fe. It's on Santa Fe. Okay, right down there in the art district. Yeah, yeah, And so, um, <clears throat> and their, their reasoning, the city of Denver's reasoning was, well... It's open to the public at some point, you know, but no, it's being closed down for this event, though. So it makes it private, makes it like invite only. But so I, I think they knew they didn't have a leg to stand on. I think that's why they backed down. Um, well, and I think the conversation goes like this, too. I mean, if you think about a bar, <clears throat> a bar is a privately owned business that's open to the public. If you were to go out on the patio of the bar, okay, 
you can consume alcohol on that patio legally because that's the part of the bar that's open to the public that is a private business that has a liquor license, okay? But if you step on the other side of that fence and you're on the street with that beer, now you're open consumption. That's illegal, okay? And so regulating marijuana like alcohol should follow the same guidelines. If you're in a privately owned business that is open to the public, even if it's private, uh, you know, like here's a list of, I'm a guest, okay, that should still ha- be able to support cannabis consumption in the state of Colorado. And I think, I think again, it's the same thing. Nobody, nobody has stepped up to the plate to challenge it. You know, if we had a bunch of money, we'd just open up a cannabis bar, start slinging weed over the counter, and as soon as they come in and filed criminal charges, we would defend the case in criminal court under due process and put it in front of a jury. Mm-hmm. And we'd see how fast the voters in Colorado that are on that jury that voted marijuana to be like alcohol, you know, hold up your verdict. Oh, yeah, and this it, would definitely be something I think. Yeah, and, and that's what it's going to take. It's either that or a lawsuit. But you have to have the, the right, you have to have the right lawsuit. You have to have, like, a good defendant. You have yeah, to but, have, like. But like, that's the thing. That's the difference between a lawsuit, say, suing the state and then taking the criminal charge. You give me the criminal charge, and now we're. Well, that's what I'm saying. You fight it. You now fight, we're, yeah, 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 but we're under due process. They only have 90 days to get you through the system, and they have to put you in front of a jury. Where if you're going through the civil court system, you're going to be, you know, in front of a judge and they're going to be litigating it to death and it's going to cost a shit ton of money. But you have to also have, like, I think it has to be the right person to take it to public. You got to get, like, the, like, little old lady who got busted for, like, having yeah, her joint or something. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Or the medical patient that actually yeah. does or need it but now is standing or, yeah, on a yeah. recreational platform or whatever. I mean, the whole thing's ridiculous. They've been threatening. Uh, you know how heartbreaking it was to go to a show at Cervantes and to see those signs Yeah, up the there? signs, no. And, I mean, how long have we been smoking weed? We've been smoking weed in Cervantes, in Cervantes since, for, since the oh, 90s. Yeah. I know. And you, that's, where are you going <laughs> to smoke theater, weed? Like, the where's 90s. the show at? Cervantes? I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now, all of a sudden, now that it's legal, they're trying to make something that's legal, that we made legal, through their process, illegal again. You know, oh. through some form of regulation or whatever. It's just, it's absolutely Well, the ridiculous. funny thing is, in the ordinance, it actually doesn't even, there's no prohibition on uh, open and public, it, on private uh, commercial property. What it is, is it's just not um, a given express permission, right? So there's a little, this is like a little nuance in law that people have to understand. Like, there's, there's an outright prohibition, like, you cannot do this, versus, like, here's all the areas where you can do it. And it doesn't say you can't. Right, but it doesn't, it doesn't also give you, you the can. areas where you can, exactly. and that's which a problem. Is, which too. is where the gray area yeah, comes exactly. in. And I think what basically has to happen is, I think, and we'll probably see this happen, is we're going to see Denver hopefully um, engage in a permitting process. Well, let me that you can like for a nonprofit, like if you're doing a charity or something, yeah. and you want to have a temporary liquor sales there, that you could do that. I think this is the thing that what I'm finding is, you know, I do a lot of promoting for Bongathong, wearing a lot of head shops, okay. When we go into head shops in Denver, what we're finding is that you have the area where all the glass is and whatnot, and then typically in the back, there's an area to dab in the private office, okay? That is legal, okay? You can do that legally. And so with that model, what's the difference between framing up the front 500 square feet of your, you know, 5,000 square foot suite, having your head shop, quote unquote, in that 500 square feet with your cash register, and then having the other 4,500 square foot behind that being your private office with your pinball tables and your pool table and your, you know, your Couple nice couches. chill out spot. And, you know, there's your desk over there and you invite all your friends back into the office. There's no difference, you know, and, and, and it's, you know, it's no different than this scenario. You get your hair done. Yeah. Okay. So you maybe you maybe maybe you go to a salon and get it done. You make mm-hmm. an appointment. Yeah, at Rebel Salon with um, Tanya Armstrong. Now is this is this an open salon? Is this can you just walk into the salon or is it like a private deal? Um, I think they do accept walk-ins occasionally, but I know that. But the, it's pretty much a private deal. Yeah. Okay. So when you walk in, you know they could potentially lock that front door, right? And you could all break out joints and start blazing in there. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not saying I mean, we have. Well, I mean, you can bring an ounce to share with them. <clears throat> They can have an ounce to share with you. Well, in theory. Legally. Yes. And, well, and, and, and in it, Denver? It's no. Well, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, that, even if the doors are locked and it's just you you girls hanging out, doing your hair, I mean, you can legally do that. 
as and long so as everybody's above 21. When you look at those gray scales. Yes, because it's no longer open at that point. Exactly. It's just, the it's front just, door's locked. Because it has to be open and public, so there's a okay, key so, word in there. So right now here. we have the 420 so, yes. hair salon studio, right? Ooh, that, you see what I'm saying? I know. So when we get into all the gray areas, like it's really hard to define the black and the white. And I think the more that these businesses keep pushing the envelope in the gray by having, you know, really nice back offices that they invite their entire clientele to go back and dab, you know, they, that they serve wine and some, well, and that's some, a private. Oh yeah. I get club. hammered when I get my hair yeah, done. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. My girlfriend worked at Figaro's yeah. for a long time. Just kidding. I don't. And, and so <laughs> if you, if you go to say city council and say, we want to open a private cannabis club and we want to look just like this, they will freak out. Mm -hmm. But if you go to your landlord and you open a head shop, and you happen to have a private space in the back for everybody to dab in, nobody cares. No problem. Nobody cares. I know. It's crazy, right? <laughs> you know? I mean, so, I think, so I think eventually, hopefully, Denver will uh, relax some they of this. They will. And yeah. it's, it's all the people that will relax first, and then the politicians will get it. Well, the it. politicians also have to realize, which, by the way, um, the, there's the city council race, which is coming up here in November. Um, all but two council members are up for election. So if you live in the city of God, Denver, let's get I suggest out. you find <laughs> out uh, who is pro weed and who is not. Okay. There's very few. Honestly, there's very few, council. but I know yeah. there's a couple. There's a couple. There are a couple. Yeah. I, I was right. fixing to say they'll be they'll be against weed until their ass gets not voted back. Yeah, in. vote marijuana 2014. I cannot t stress this enough to people. Yeah, and, and if that's, you're gonna be a single issue voter, this should be it. You know, and, and I think it's gonna take a challenge, uh, you know, or a precedent set, you know, in a court of law on a couple of these issues before things will really get set straight and we can maneuver in the models in which we're visioned under regulate marijuana like alcohol. But I think it's inevitable. Yeah, and and it'll get there. And I think I think for Denver, it's gonna be little baby steps. I think what we're gonna look at here soon, hopefully, is a permitting. process. Process, right so you know like if i'm throwing a private uh if i'm throwing my own event like a concert or something i can get a temporary liquor permit right so they're gonna look at a temporary i think cannabis permit yeah, something but, like that but think about this like it, when you have a private service do like bar service like for your wedding, wedding they don't have a permit. Well, they just if you have all the a, maybe catering. It depends on the caterers. Sometimes do have a, a certain right. kind of business license, but, but for a, but, but not you're right. a liquor license. No, but at the same time, I also don't charge guests to come to my wedding. So if there's any, that's the problem. That that's the pro well, I, I want to actually. Wait, but I have that's a whole the thing. Other I mean, about that. yeah, there there is a whole gray. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's the same when you look at alcohol, and that's why that's why when I always draw these conclusions, like you know, my first thought is like, okay, how is alcohol done in this manner? And then cannabis should – I mean, look, we gave him a mandate. We made it pretty easy for yeah, him. Yeah, like five we, times. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel, right? Regulate marijuana like, like alcohol. alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you really should just be looking back at the code of alcohol and figuring it out. Uh, in my opinion, you know, marijuana, beer. Okay? Sure. Yes, say water, absolutely. Say water press hash, wine. Mm, BHO, maybe. whiskey. Everclear. Straight up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, and so like if you want to break it down even further, like it's you know it's kind of coincidental. There's 16 gallons in a keg. Well, there's 16 ounces in a pound. You know, so you could easily you know draw those same numbers oh, and work sure, out yeah. a regulation system and run with it. But again, they're reinventing the wheel. They're regulating like medical marijuana. And if you think about seed to sale, try to try to put that to beer. Well, I think, sale? And I think part of it is like we're still operating in a culture of fear with people dealing with Absolutely. this. It's still brand new. Um, I think the other part is that cannabis is unique in and only of the fact, unless you're vaping or edibilizing. Um, yeah, I just made that up. Uh, <laughs> that people are like, oh, are you exposed? Trust me, I've been heckled by the smart mommies about this. She actually said I was poisoning her children. When I was giving a, Ouch. when I was up speaking in front of city council on behalf of this very open and public ordinance, actually right. trying to figure it out, like, you poisoned our children, oh, Gina geez. Carboni. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, no, 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 no not, not, no, not, no. Not, no. But like, you know, if you really have that's a problem true. with that, why don't you uh, stop? Do you drive an SUV? Stop driving your SUV because that's poisoning my child. Like, really. You know, let's yep. talk about what actually yep. poisons our atmosphere. Well, and there's still so much reefer madness. Yeah, oh, reefer madness, in crazy. The air, and it is dying down. I mean, you got to look at it from even from the point where we got medical is on the books since '99 in the state of Colorado. Okay, when Eric Holder and Obama waddled up to the podium and said it was okay, everybody here jumped in. None of us would jump in before that because everybody saw the kids in California keep getting busted. You know, every time they put a little empire together. The FBI and the mm -hmm. feds and the DA would come and shut them down. You know? Well, Jeter, you seem pretty like uh, politically savvy. You've seen these two recent now federal uh, bureaus, one, the right. Bureau of Reclamation, 
and won the DEA. Now, um, won the DEA sees those hemp seeds in Kentucky, right. even though totally legal to now grow <laughs> yeah. hemp for research and they and even got purposes. the head nods from the feds which is crazy okay. yeah and now and now we've got the bureau of reclamation that said uh <laughs> um oh nope you can't use this water even though you've been using it for 20 years now <laughs> to grow medical marijuana suddenly now we have a problem with it what do you oh. think why isn't the obama's administration well i i don't said, know knock it off you <laughs> knuckleheads i think the thing is is there's there's just too many heads up there uh, with conflicting ideas of where marijuana should be and mm. go a lot of the old guys on Capitol Hill are going to have to die before there's going to be change up there. And so, you know, from, from that standpoint, I think it's crazy. But, you know, when you look at the federal government, like the, the water article that I read, mm-hmm. that you read, okay, yep. that I know you're referring to, you know, it says you can't use the water from the Department of Reclamation. From their reservoirs. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. From but, their reservoir water, even that's the people's water. Like two articles down in the same NBC news feed, is another article where Eric Holder is saying that he needs computer hackers to fight the Chinese cyber war, and he's okay if you smoke a joint on the way to the interview. Oh, yeah. Yep. And it's so, cool. you, you know... You use it for the last three years. Well, what, what page are these guys on? I mean, the, there's so many different conflictions. It's I, I think a good example is Jeff Sweeten. Do you know who Jeff Sweeten is? Well, please enlighten us. Chris Barkowitz. You know who Chris Barkowitz yes. is? Okay. Mm-hmm. Jeff Sweeten is the Fed agent that kicked in Chris Barkowitz's door. Oh, really? Okay. okay. And Jeff Sweeten has been kicking in doors for 40 years, especially for pot. Okay. And I'm sure a guy like Jeff Sweeten didn't appreciate the Obama administration and Eric Holder saying, ah, it's okay if it's legal in your state because he's a Fed agent. It's still illegal on the Fed books. And he intends to do his job. And that's gonna, his paycheck, too. Yeah, he's right? going to go kick yeah. indoors. It doesn't matter who it is. And so when you look at like those kind of conflictions within the federal government, yeah, Obama and Holder might be like, yeah, go ahead. You know, we don't care anymore. We're not going to harass you. But Jeff Sweeten didn't hear the same thing. You know, Jeff Sweeten saw you on Nine News showing off your Highlands Ranch grow and. He's going to come kick in your fucking door, right? But and Obama's his boss, and so is Eric Holder. I know, and that's where that's and that's where the split is. Because look, you've got all these people that have these moral issues with it. It's no different than the politicians trying to make something illegal again that we made legal. They they have this moral dilemma that they think they need to uphold for marijuana, and it's been so ingrained for seventy years that they just mm-hmm. have a hard time stepping away from it. It's just like the head of the DEA, whatever the heck her name Michelle is, Michelle Lenhart. There you go. Oh, I mean, dumb. she she is so far out there you know as far what? as marijuana and mm-hmm. enforcement. She's crazy. And and that girl and, be nuts. And Holder is her boss, and Obama is her boss, but clearly they are not on the same page. Clearly, yeah. So until you get some of that continuity with in the government, God, it, I mean, it could take forever to, to, to really get it nailed yeah. down. I mean, I sort of see it as like we're experiencing like the death throes right now. I mean, you, you sort are. of see this like it's a rubber banding effect, right? Yeah. Like the genie's out of the bottle. Yeah, the genie's out of the bottle. So now we're seeing this like sort of backlash, but it's like a tide, uh-huh. and then it's gonna slowly it's ev- recede ev- back again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 what? We got a call. Oh, we got a call. Who's calling? Alan. Hello. Who is this? Who is this? Is that Alan? Wait, who are... <laughs> that was not my kid. I was actually scared for a minute. Like, oh, fuck. Did I forget? Do you have any cannabis questions? <laughs> <laughs> did you want to go to the bongathon? Did you? That was a total kid that just You are 21, in. right? Yeah. Mom? No. No, not my kid, y'all. <laughs> So yeah, King of, it, hit, hit, no, 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 just kidding. All of this stuff is just you know brutal growing pains is what it is, and you're going to have these growing pains for for some time. And I think it'll be the same deal, you know, when medical jumped in, and we all opened up these dispensaries on every corner. You know, I did no nine, and when we were all on that curve, you had this backlash again, and you had like Lone Tree and Highlands Ranch and stuff that mm-hmm. were like we don't want it in our backyard, and so they told legislation to legislate it, and that's where we got twelve eighty four. And when 1284 came in, you know, now we actually had legislation on the books for marijuana in the state of Colorado. That was a huge game changer. I mean, that those, those laws had been in the books for 10 years, and nobody had legislated anything on them, you know, for over a decade. And so when that, when that knee-jerk reaction happened, I mean, that was basically, you know, opening the door to, okay, here we have a 
system that we're going to work on and we're going to run with. You just got to jump through these huge, high, flaming hoops and pay all these ridiculous fees. Oh, my be God. Fine. I know. <laughs> Is that the start of the MMED? Yeah, that was the beginning yeah. of the yep. MED in, in 1284 passed. And, and so, you know, and then 1317 passed after that. And, you know, there was a crack. There was a crack there again, you know, when... Higginlooper. Oh, for rec thirteen seventeen. Yeah, when Hig- Higginlooper signed thirteen seventeen, Norm and I and a couple other friends, we we basically started a recreational collective called Blue Mountains, mm-hmm. and so we're yep. a lot like a um, medical collective. Like you know, a lot of these guys that are grown in these warehouses that are, don't have licenses, but they're on the medical and they're registered with the the K- med, etc. Yeah, mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, we're a lot like that model, except we're strictly for recreational, and so there is no. Uh, basically legislation underneath a recreational collective. So we don't have our hands tied on quantity. Well, you're just basically packaging. brewing your own beer, boys. So. Yeah, and that's exactly, exactly what we're doing. Yeah, A little bit. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that collective has, has grown larger. Now, when they did pass 1317, they banned that incorporated collective. And that, would, again, was another knee-jerk reaction kind of un, unknown to us. I mean, we did an article with Denver Post. And they put us on the front page. Sunday. Yeah, I, I always tell people now, like, if you have a really good business idea, just wait a while. Don't advertise that stuff on the Denver Post. When the people are in session, wait till May, okay? And then May, you go crazy, right? And then you just, and then you save, make a lot of money off the business you're running in May, right? And then you hire a lobbyist so that when January comes it. around, right. they'll stop whatever bad ideas those legislators are coming up with. Well, so there that's was five, the way y'all should do it. There was five of us when we did that thing out in front of the... The Justice Center. We yeah. got a dad bus, and we, we parked it out in front of the Justice Center in our, <laughs> our attorney's parking lot, and we did a we did a open happy hour. We invited everybody down to partake. Nice. And then we were we were setting up this feel good article about you know how we have this collective and that you know we can provide you with recreational cannabis because none of the dispensaries were open at the time. Yeah. And so we were really. Nice have to go to the license. Yeah, and they, so they it, tried to dig around, see which one of us had been to jail and to the joint. Yeah, for and it drug really charges. came out as a slanted article. It was nothing. On pot collectors test limits of pot laws, and you know it was really this really. And now the Denver Post article. has the cannabis. Right? Yeah, 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 you exactly. Guys would have yeah, been the like, cannabis. I yeah, love right. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just funny. The Denver Post cracks me up every time. Yep. Oh, they're. They're, you know, oh, we hate weed, we hate weed, but we're going to start our own cannabis, like, you know, entire oh, yeah. blog all about weed, 10 articles a day. Because yeah, they crazy. get international media clicks from Well, that. and that's Once it. They I mean, they, they understand that the, yeah, the models for them. the money are there. It's no different than the politicians. You know, the politicians, area by area, realize the revenue that whatever area that embraced it was making. Okay, mm-hmm. and slowly, one by one, they've changed over. It's no different than Aurora. Aurora's going wreck in July. You know, I lived. They a, skipped right past medical. Well, so yeah. and, and I, 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 go right to wreck. I lived in Aurora my whole life. Okay, and when I opened my dispensary in '09, I literally opened it up on the Denver side of Aurora because I knew that Denver or Aurora wouldn't allow it. They would be kicking everybody out. And the couple of guys that did open dispensaries in Aurora got kicked out you know and so here we are three years later you know almost four years later and now they're embracing it they're gonna bring in wreck well why it's the money you know they're gonna compete with denver yeah yeah, they're right by the airport they're gonna have all this tourism coming in like they they're gonna have later operating hours than denver so everybody who missed their 7 p.m deadline that's right we're going to havana mississippi (laughs) okay you know what the airport will be in on it too Oh, and so yeah. when you look at that, <laughs> yeah. when you look at the bar model, like these cannabis clubs that, you know, that we all, all we want to do is basically have 25 strains behind the counter. We want to have brand new bongs on the table. You come in, you buy a gram, you bong it out all you want while you're there. Take whatever you got left home with you. We don't care. You know what I mean? And like, that's the model everybody wants to be in. $5 dabs, and, you know, during well, the- I, I, At the Mile High Cup, I saw some actually really kind of fascinating inventions. I did see a portable bar that had little hoses coming out of it that they would be like what kind of gram do you want and you could just try it and then you just like right there it was that good chemistry had that jamie lewis killing it you know i mean that was a great idea you just like saddle up like sit you sat at your bar stool you got to pick your strain and then you got to just i mean you couldn't really move right but i'm sure people also have vape pens and things like that But it's only going to take like one municipality say like netherland to embrace the idea of selling cannabis over the counter and taxing it and as soon as they start seeing that windfall of everybody from, let's say, Central City and Blackhawk 
rolling over to Ned because they can sit in the cannabis car bar for a few hours while they're on their, you know, tourism break or whatever. You know, when they start realizing that tax income, all right, that's when the other municipalities will look at them and say, hmm. You know, that bar model might not be too bad. Well, I think there the first place we're gonna <laughs> the first place we're gonna see this one's probably Pueblo. I think is mean the first ones. They're definitely looking at cannabis clubs. So well, that's good. I think, well, I think it needs you to be could, a I think you could convince up in Central City or something to have a private club. Maybe. Well, you know, it's funny because I do a lot of uh, you know I've been talking to a lot of municipalities. I've been sending out letters, and man, it's it's like I said. As soon as you mention the word cannabis club. Like there's like this steep fear, you know yeah. what I mean, and like you have to explain everything. Like I've got in depth reports about DUI and driving statistics mm-hmm, and like mm-hmm. all this stuff, so that when they come back at me and they're like, "Oh my God, what about this? Oh my God, what about this?" I'm like, "Yeah, this is good. This is good. This is good." But you know, they're still just so on the fence about it that I, you don't really have any of them that are just embracing it. Like, yeah, come on down. It's gonna take a while. It will. Still, yeah. that's still gonna it's be a way. And, you know, I always tell people that like when they freak out about the regulations. I'm just like, give it, a th- you know, give it like two or three years. We're gonna be able to peel a lot of these back because then when the other states come online, it's the same thing. Yeah. Cities that are the same way as states. Once the other states come online, they're gonna go, oh, I want to, I want, wait, wait, wait. Now I want your business to stay well, here. Well, and, so. and the glare will go away. Like, yeah, there's such a glare on the state right now because of this whole brand new recreational a marijuana. Nice glare. Yeah, it's just, it's a, yeah. I mean, it's a huge glare. So like, any nobody really wants to do anything wrong or make any bad moves or make, you know. So like, everybody's kind of on this tightrope looking at each other, like. Is this okay? Is and it, yeah, it's is okay. it a glare or more like a nice hazy fog? Yeah, I think it's a, <laughs> I think it's a, a bright light over a hazy fog, and everybody's kind of lost in it. Like yeah. mushrooms, right? I'm Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Oh. So, but it's going in the right direction. You know, have you been to the Lazy Lion or have you been to? Speakeasy? Or? I have not. Okay. Not yet. Well, no. those clubs are really interesting when you get up to Colorado Springs up there. Like Lazy Lion is a reimbursement model. They're an incorporated collective just like ours. And they, they basically, it's a full on dispensary when you walk in it. I mean, they have 20 or 30 slabs of wax on the shelf. Nice, they, nice wax. Yeah, really nice oh, yeah. wax. They have, you know, 10, 12 lines of bud on the shelf. They have $2 edibles. Dabs. Yeah, and you can go in there and consume. Uh, you can you go, have to be a patient. No, you don't have to be anything. You really? have to be twenty one, and you can be in Colorado Springs. You, you, Colorado you Springs, pay their yeah. membership fee because it's a. It's oh, because it's a club. Just okay. like club, a, but, just yeah. like Blue Mountains is. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And, and you so do have to be you know, twenty one, right? It, it, when you uh, just twenty one. For, yep. for all intents and purposes, it's just like any dispensary you've been in, but it has chill out lounge. It has pinball machines and video games you pay a membership fee for yeah this? Okay. and there's hot nails there i mean you can go right up to the bar and hit the hot nails right there at the bar you know who i watch see it was always so funny when we're bringing this up like when we're trying to figure out oh what would this look like um in Den- denver city council um i always brought up um because i grew up in salt lake city too and it's just like salt lake city you have to be a me- you know back in the day you actually had to be a member of their bars right to get in a drink. Sure. You know, you had to pay. And then if you weren't a member, though, they were, they were very clever. They Sponsors. Said, oh, Sponsor. would, you like, would you like the owner, Jim, to sponsor you for the night? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you pay, then you just pay a $15 cover. Uh, a $15 oh. sponsor fee, yeah. and we got you. Da, sure. Da, da, da. I'm so obviously like I'm not a member of your yeah. fucking bar Utah because bar. I'm from yeah. Colorado and not crazy. But, right. And yeah. now they got rid of that, though. Once the I, Olympics came I gotta in, say, and that, that was, was it. very the Olympics, untenable. That's when they were like, oh, we need to make some money on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, I went to those Olympics. They were fun. It was yeah. Like you one, huh? yeah. yeah. Nice. Yep. Good, uh, Smoking weed in Utah? Watch out. I don't know. And now we're back to the beer. No, not the beer Olympics. The weed Olympics. Yeah. Do you think that's eventually what the bongi thong is going to be like, is like an Olympics? Well, I yep. think what we'd like to do. We, we've missed one of the weed smoking events. We, you What? Y'all didn't talk about one of them. I think y'all open bong a thong was the only one I didn't get to. Oh, okay. Let me well, see this. And open open bong a thong is bring your bong, bring your three and a half grams. And I think we like should like freestyle bring... competition, exactly. right? Oh, yeah. freestyle. Yep. Yeah. And I think we should bring back the tandem gram. Yeah, Norm likes tandem gram. That's we the funniest competition. That's basically where you you have two guys that are have to smoke the gram, but the one guy can only load it, and the other guy can't touch the bong at all. He can only put his lips to it and suck. And so let's go ahead and read off the uh, sponsors here. These all of them it's can funny. people still They are the sponsors. And yeah. can you add more sponsors? Is it too late? Oh no, for we're looking for sponsors and we 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 still have some things that we need sponsors uh, for. Do you think you'll ever do like an edibles eating competition? You know, I, I thought we should do it like a, a recreated uh, spo- uh, s'mores contest. You know, wow. like a campfire recreated s'more. 
That'd be good. Oh, I dude, I would kill. You see it. what I'm saying? I'm a great. Smart, I think like, that would be like good. a cooking contest on the spot. Like, well, yeah, because it, we, uh, you know, it's a camping event, so I think the s'more would fit in on a on an edible level who, for who medicated chili. You want to do a medicated chili cook off? Well, it's recreated. What? It's recreated. Oh. I said, who did you say jumped in on that big sponsorship? For the bonnet, Mahatma. They they oh, hooked Mahatma it up for us this year. They're yeah, we they're love gonna they're gonna take us take care of our staging and stuff this year. So oh really? We, we really Mahatma's great. Mahatma. They'll kill they, it. Yeah, Brett and those Good guys. Products. Are, you Good products. You know, three three D also huge. Tony. Oh Tony, I love. You know, 3D. she's great. She does amazing. She's been in the game since '09, and and she, her and her husband actually went to bonnet thongs back in the day. So oh, I bet. Yeah, I so oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so they're familiar with it. They love it. You know, without her support, man, I, I don't think we, we could do it year to year. And so I'm going to go ahead and re-off the sponsor. Yeah, no, here. please do. So we've got, uh, let's see, Cannabis Center, 3D. That's 3D. MMC. Yep. Mahatma Concentrates. That's right. Puke and Beagle Glass. That's one of my favorite logos of yeah, all time. Yeah, they're making our trophies and our competition tubes this year. <laughs> uh, we've got the Canna Saver. We've got uh, Canna Pages Lab 710. We've got... Um, oh God, Healthy Creations tiny. Edibles. Healthy Creations Edibles. I know, I need my glasses, y'all. Um, we've got Weed Pimp, a little monster thing. Daddy Dinks, Trico Shidaki. That's Green Monster. They're hooking green us up monster? with t-shirts this year. Oh, I want a Green Monster t-shirt. Do they make them out of hemp? My, no. Good can't. question. I don't think no, so. No, they do not. <laughs> <laughs> They're 100% polyester. I think they are poly. <laughs> Damn it. We got Medicine Man Denver, Lazy Lion, Pipe Dreams, Grassroots, Blue Mountain, Purple Haze. Oh, yeah. Pipes Peak. Pikes Peak. Oh, and speaking of Purple Haze, by the way, we do a best camp contest. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, and Purple Haze kicks down like two grand worth of stuff. And whoever has the best camp okay. gets it. Gets Bargain. It. Bargain balls. balls. Bargain balls. Bargain balls. Cool I, that's a tiny ass fucking Bargain font, balls. y'all. <laughs> Bargain balls. WGS, which is the right group. The right group. Event they, services. They hook it up. I yep. Bake. I Bake Lounge. I Bake Lounge. One BR. One Blunt Radio. There you go. Ink Therapy. Ink Therapy, yes. Some weird magazine, THC, the I, Hemp Conway. Oh, yeah, those THC uh, guys. Those guys are pretty Conway good. Hemp Conway, yeah. Sewer, Sewer, Sewer. Uh, <laughs> Subcool Seeds. TGA. 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 Yeah. TGA. Yeah. We're going to have seeds in the Golden Ticket pi- uh, packages from those guys. Really? Yeah, yeah so nice. you get some seeds if you get a Golden Ticket. Golden Ticket includes a bong, t-shirt, hat, hat pins. Like Charlie and the Charlie Chocolate Factory style? Yeah, nice. everything. Ah. Uh, Oh, Golden there's ticket. even more than everything. You get a blanket that's bong and thong blanket. Bong. We're going to give you uh, free dabs. If I get a golden ticket, how do I get this golden ticket? It's 420 bucks. 420 bucks. Yeah, and it includes everything. Oh, nice. Okay. When, uh, when he says everything, he means everything. You get a private porta toilet delivered to your campsite. Yeah, private yeah. shitter. Wait, for $420? Yeah. Yeah. I get. Your own what? shitter. A private porta toilet. You get a fleece bongathon blanket, a bongathon shirt, a bongathon hat, know you, a I'm bong, bong uh, hat pins, pins, tray, poker, lighters. Entrance into the poster, VIP bus with all you can dab free and smoke dabs, all weekend. Weed all weekend. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of manly. All I shit in the woods like a <laughs> big boy. I don't need no private potty, okay? It's it's fucking funny. Uh, we got High Country Homebrew. Yeah, they're... the. Uh, they're gonna hook us up with uh, like fifty-five gallons of recreated beer. Recreated beer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got uh, Black Voodoo. Black Voodoo tattoo, yeah. Uh, Justin, go check him out. He's a good artist, man. He's got good ink down there, and they he's got a new location up with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah where's where it at? Location? It's like uh, right next to Lazy J's on Alameda and Kipling. Just oh, okay. West. There you go. It's so on the west nice. side. And then Ink Therapy, they they actually hook us up with all the weed for the fastest gram. Uh, they do a donation on that. Miley does. They're at nine nine seven five East Colfax, so they're out on the east side. And those guys are super fly too. They can do some fly ink. And then we got uh, Play DJ. Yeah, Play DJ Never Civil. They're helping us do a second stage out there. We're gonna have some DJs out there. Kind Tray. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're doing some killer trays for the event. Nice. Shout out V Syndicate too. Yeah, they're gonna do some uh, grinder cards. Never Civil. And we've got uh, yeah, Never Civil. Some kind of globe. Um, Club. Never so. Seven Ten Radio. The yep. The Daily Dude. Dot com. Yep. Papers. And social media networking. Pure hemp. Pure hemp. Pure hemp. They're gonna throw down some stuff, and I think Raw's gonna kick us down too. And then whatever. What's that guy? Who's that? That's Jetter Systems. That's my bong line. That's yours. That's me. I like that logo. I like that. It's dope as fuck. See, and then and it's, it it begs the question. You see what I'm saying? You see how that works? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck is that? He looks like an angry <laughs> ninja star. He is. He is. He's. I bet he's cool. 
<laughs> what time is it? It's about that time. About that time? 420, just kidding. So let's uh, wrap this up. So again, this is on... August 1st and 2nd. August 1st and 2nd. And uh, if you need a a ticket, uh, be industrious, you fucking lazy ass motherfucker. Figure it out. You can get invitations at Medicine Man, Purple Haze, Daddy Danks, Pipe Dreams, uh, I Bake Lounge has them. And of course you can get them from our hotline number, which is 720-432-6188. Talk to Norm. Talk go, dirty to Norm. Or, or go to bongathon.com. That's B-O-N-G-A-T-H-O-N.com. Bongathon.com. Hit us on hey, the Facebook. We're, yeah, we're, we're doing a, a remote event Monday oh, night, yeah. too. Can we, can we plug sure, that up? Sure. Down, plug whatever you want. Down, down, down at the game. Watering Bowl on Leedsdale, uh, for, uh, Monday night, we're going to do a Fast as Scram. Oh, so nice. So I think you got some lungs. A little impromptu. Uh, That's right. Yeah, I love that stuff. A way to win free Bongathon tickets. Yeah, oh. if, you, if you get the fastest gram, we'll give you a pair of tickets. And you don't even have to beat me and Norm. You just got to post the fastest time among everybody else. What if it's the most quality time? What if I'm not fast? What if I just No, like, no, no. This is fast. What if I just gram. do it with style? No, no, this isn't stylish gram. We've been we've been considering that kind of Like figure skating style? I could totally rock that right, shit, right? Right. <laughs> You think? That's, 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 a good one. That, 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 that's a good look. Like, who could, who could smoke a bong while on a unicycle? Because I'd be like, what be in, up, bitches? I got this. That would be kind of like in the tandem gram where the, the smoker, all he can do is put his lips on the bong and smoke. The loader loads the bong, holds the bong, lights the bong, and pulls the bowl. And all the person smoking can do is smoke. And smoke and blow it out. And hope his loader doesn't choke him when he pulls the bowl to clear it. <laughs> but uh, could you have matching costumes? Would that make Sure, I think yeah. that would be better. Yeah, all right. I think that would be fantastic. I'm just... I'm trying to figure out how like Team. a non-athlete like myself can get involved in this, like rhythmic gymnastics. You know, can I just like <laughs> twirl the little ribbon and be like, "Hey, what's a up?" Cheerleader? Yeah, not, yeah. not like a cheerleader. I want to win something. I oh. definitely want to get like a medal out of this. But I'm thinking like, what's the like laziest kind of sport I can do? I know ice dancing. Curling, like the curling. I want to do the curling of the bongathon. Can I just like put a little broom out in front of like? The I was weed? gonna say curling's like hey, cleaning. We, <laughs> we are gonna have a biggest bud contest. So if you can biggest find butt? biggest butt, biggest bud, bud, um, bud, not butt, bud. So if you if you know a grower and you can get a really big bud. Like, just bring it. That's all you got to do. And then show it on stage. So that's kind of like the curling. Oh, I like that. Yeah, a little, like, showing off. That's like the bodybuilder part. If you could bring the Arnold Schwarzenegger (laughs) of fucking weed up right now, like, I want to see some beef on that. Find (sighs) me, okay? I'll be the drunk one in the grassroots hat. So just come (laughs) find me. And then uh, we'll work out a deal. We'll work out a little trade, a little agreement, a little contract situation. It'll be a lot of fun. (laughs) What? I don't know. All right, are we wrapping up here? All right, well, I'm so glad you guys came. Andy, why the fuck didn't you talk the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> what do you he's, want me to talk he about? He shrugs his shoulders. Yeah. I did talk. I talked about our sponsors. I jumped in there and laughed a few times. Yeah. What's your Facebook page? It's uh, forward slash Bat Colorado, like swinging a bat. Oh, Bat Colorado. Bat Colorado. Caps. Do you have any, like a matter. Twitter handle or uh, no? We Rob- don't. We don't Twitter. Tumblr. No. You we, do. we don't know how to Twitter actually. We, we don't. There was either. talk about a band called Twiddle maybe possibly making an appearance. Twiddle, yeah, we did talk about Twiddle. But. You should do an Instagram. <laughs> At least get inst- Instagram's fun. I know. I don't we'll know. get up on yeah, it. Yeah, we'll work on it. Instagram's like the new social media. It's fun. It's, it's right. way better. I think it's way. I think it's way uh, more effective than like twitter it's less pictures pictures worth a thousand words yeah and the hashtags are a lot more you can unlimited hashtags and it's a lot less drama hashtag hashtag we don't even get the whole hashtag thing yet i'll explain it to you later rip that bong and then i'll explain it we play tag (laughs) with hash (laughs) not that kind of hashtag he's like is that a new we call it dab out he's like that's what we call the tandem right (laughs) that's That's our hashtag you guys should actually start an event called hashtag yeah yeah that's it tag like a wrestling competition i mean tag out all right all right well um i would like to thank jetter and norm and the um blabbery mouth andy (laughs) from the bongathon bongathon Bongathon. crew and um thanks david madalena for not being here the show is so much more fun when you're not around get your invitations you would have oh and um i would also like to do a shout out for incredibles (laughs) the best 
the best edibles. What? I, I didn't have the script here. Usually there's you, a script here for me to read. You would think that David would have called in, right? Well, I know. All, you all you got to do is talk about the Denver Post article because Incredibles was the only one that scored, that scored over there. Oh, my damage. gosh. They're the only <laughs> ones <laughs> That's right. with accurate uh, They're the THC only ones that count. actually We won't mention any other names. It. Yeah, you can go ahead and mention. Just kidding. No, they're a great, uh, great product. Great. Um, I think they they have one of the best uh, branding out there for edibles. I think they have one of the best products out there for edibles. I think that um, they do their product responsibly and they do it deliciously. So it's always a lot of fun. So this is Samantha. I'm signing off for THCMagazine.com. Can we say that? The hemp connoisseur.com. Is there a .com for us? I- Chris has no idea. We're, so I'm awful at this shit. This is David's job. This is why David should be here, but that's it. Um, what? Anyways, peace, love, and hempiness. Woo-hoo.